Welcome to Pre-Snap Podcast, presented by Line Star App. Here's your host, Casey Bubba and Scott Bogman. And welcome back, everybody, to another episode of the Pre-Snap Podcast, brought to you by the wonderful people at Line Star Sports. Make sure you check them out on Twitter at Line Star App and at Line Star NFL, and download the app in the Apple App Store and the Google Play Store, everything you need in the palm of your hand to build your winning DFS lineups. We are here to preview your Week 7 main slate DFS action. Ten games, ten whole games by a Giddon, as I've heard somewhere today. So we'll check that one out. But check first, check me out on Twitter at BD and drinking my coast. As always, on Twitter at Bogman Sports. Scott Bogman. Scott Bogman. How are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing great. I'm ready to talk about this first game and see how much Deshaun Watson is for the Miami Dolphins. So and my uh, internet just went out. <laughs> see you later. <laughs> I know uh, Bubba has been Bubba does not want Deshaun Watson on the Miami Dolphins. And the rumors have been there uh, the whole year. I mean, look, at this point, we may know that this was all stupid, made up crap from Deshaun Watson's agent, which it could have been. Uh, but uh, he has not been officially traded as uh, we are recording this. Just the rumors came up today, and I, I, you know, I got to poke fun at Bubba a little bit because he would do this exact oh, same yeah. stuff to me. So I would. Um, yes. You know, we'll, we'll see if that actually comes to fruition. I hope for your sake it doesn't. I also just I can't imagine, and this is what I've said the whole off season, you know, or in the whole season, like. Why would a team trade for Watson when his own team refuses to play him? And yes. maybe it's more about him not wanting to play, but I got to believe that it's his off the field stuff yeah. that is making him not play. So, because there's two things the off the field stuff is a gigantic issue. That guy, he, if he can't, if he's not allowed to play, shouldn't play, whatever, you can't trade for him. B, it's weak. the NFL hasn't done anything about it. That's either. well, because innocent until proven guilty. That's the NFL's strategy. I, I, no, I, but it's not. They, we've seen That's them true. put guys That's on true. the commissioner's exempt list before. So, so but must uh, the Texans also aren't true. trying to play him. So That's true. They're not trying to force the NFL's hand. Um, the second part that would tilt me, the Dolphins would way overpay. Yeah. Uh, I mean, the, the Texans have said many, many times they want three number ones. Yeah. For, and 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 that's going to. Uh, yeah. I, w- I would be a new fan somewhere else. That would yeah. Be I over. mean. Uh, I'm I'm sure it would be green uh, green and gold in your uh, in yep, your house. You know me. You know uh, me. Go if, pack. If, go. Go if pack. That go. was the case. But I, what about the you? You live in the Bay Area. No, I don't no. mind the Niners. Don't mind the Niners. But go okay. pack. Go. go All pack, right. Go. Okay. Yeah, I get yeah. it. That's where you're a Rams fan. I'll root for Stafford. It's it's fun to root for. Stafford. Are you originally from the Bay, the Wisconsin area? Or no, no. My my good friends are. If we go back and visit, and I I, I would live there if I didn't have to live in snow for half of the year. Yeah, that's true. Uh, zero beautiful. shares of snow for me. Never yeah, done it's, snow before. So. It's beautiful for like six months. It's great. I, I'm a southern boy all the way, man. Yep, so, back there in Texas. Texas, yep. yeehaw. Yeehaw, boy. Ain't no snow for me. Maybe it'll no freeze again, but we're ready for it now, now that I'm here. Yeah, so. that electrical company, that's a big thing we got going on back there. <laughs> I'll just go to Cabo. We'll be fine. Um, all right. Ten games slate, as we mentioned. Got your Fandle, got your DraftKings all ready to rock and roll for you. And Bogman teased the first game with the Atlanta Falcons at the Miami Dolphins. Over under 47 and a half in this game. Both these teams that I mentioned on the betting show, they're top six in pace. So points against is not a problem. So how do you break this one down for DFS? Look, uh, I now that we think Tua is going to be the starter here, I'm going to roll with them. I think 5,500 specifically on DK is a great price. Uh, Matt Ryan at 57 is also a decent price. So I think they're both playable. I think Cordell Patterson at 63 or 8,000 uh, as a running back it is uh, playable as well. Nobody else as far as running backs. Uh, if you want to roll out Calvin Ridley at 66, that's okay. I like Russell Gage and his price point at 4000 or 5200 uh, I've been picking on that uh, Dolphins second corner the last couple weeks, and it's been paying off. So I really like him. I think Jalen Waddle, who gets just way uh, too many targets, I think he's in play as well. If Devontae Parker is healthy, I like him. Um, Gesicki at 4700 is in play too. So like you said, there is a lot. There are a lot of possible options in this game. Yeah, definitely. Like, if you want to go Ryan or Tua, you can. I like Tua. Even last week in the loss, he put up the fantasy points. They threw it a ton. They basically abandoned the running game. 
it'd be so Dolphins to go back to it this week in a game where they can throw all over Atlanta. But Tua should be in there, especially at 55 on DK. That's a great price point. I think Mike Davis is intriguing this week because his price is down below Coral Patterson's now. So that makes it like <laughs> somewhat entertaining for me. Like, do we get Mike Davis week? It could be there. 52 on DK, 63 on FanDuel. Honestly, I feel like it might be Wayne Gallman week. Because oh, that happens. Mike, Mike Davis, Davis hasn't been doing anything, and they're coming off the bye. So when do you get Gallman involved? This is where you get him. Oh, no, 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 not happening. <laughs> um, uh, Ridley at 66 on DK is extremely cheap, like very cheap. I think that's a phenomenal price point if you're going to stack this game up, especially if you're going to go like Dolphins heavy and bring it back. Ridley at 66 on DK is great. Don't mind the gauge comments you made, but you're getting uh, basically an alpha receiver at 66. I like that quite a bit. Jalen Waddle still too cheap at 56 on a, a PPR site. I like that a lot. But do keep in mind if see if Parker's in or out. If he's out again, then it definitely elevates Waddle and Mike Jacecki. Because when it's just when the injuries are there, it's, it's literally those two guys like over and over and over again. So it's a very nice uh, a passing tree. But I like that. I like that price on Ridley quite a bit. Unless you want to punt to gauge, I get it. I 100 percent get it. Should be a lot of passing in this game, to say the least. Carolina. At the New York Giants, over under 43 in this one. This is an ugly game, Bogman, but is there any fancy goodness for you? I can't hear you. Yeah, it is correct. My no, bad. I, I, I had hit <laughs> mute. I'm over here blabbing. I had yeah. hit mute. Uh, my bad. So anyway... Uh, I will re-say what I was saying. Chuba Hubbard at 61 and 73, I think is a decent price. Um, I also, anytime you want to play DJ Moore, I think it's okay. It's 71 and 7,700. Um, then Sterling Shepard at 56 and 65 is a good price. That's about all I'm interested in this game. Maybe the Carolina defense at 35 and 45 is a decent option because the Giants are pretty banged up. Yes, yeah, the tough one. Like, a few weeks ago, I'd be all in on this because Danny Dimes is still cheap. I, I, I could see a, wor- a weird world if you want to go back to a giant stack. You could. I don't want to, personally. But if you're like in massive tournaments and you want to get different, Dimes is so cheap at 54 on DK, 7,000 on Fandle. But uh, it's not one of my premier things. Like I'm with you. I still think Sterling Shepard at 56 on DK, 65 on Fandle. Does some, have some upside with all the injuries they have there. Don't hate that. Um, if you want to keep going to the Robbie Anderson well, it's been ugly, but the targets are there. 48 on DK, 55 on Fanduel, um, or it's the defense. Like I'm with you. I don't love a lot about this game. I could see bits and pieces if you want, but for the most part, probably just gonna cross this one off. If, if all things considered, Chicago at Tampa Bay, a little afternoon delight for you guys in this one. And Tampa Bay is a heavy favorite, like most of the afternoon teams on this slate. And the over under is uh, 47 box. So what do you like in this game? Uh, look. I- Justin Fields at 53 and 65 is not a bad price. And I know that uh, Tampa Bay is really good at stopping the run. And Justin Fields runs a lot. I expect Devin White to be spying him most of the time in this game. But the secondary is bad in Tampa Bay. I mean, he signed Sherman off the street and he was an immediate starter for them. And now he's hurt. So uh, I think that he could actually pass in this game. And, you know, it really doesn't matter. The dude can run. So I love Devin White, but he's not going to get him every time. There's going to be a couple that he breaks. So uh, I like Justin Fields here. Don't like any running back here. Both these teams stop the run pretty well. Not going to mess with that. I'm not doing Allen Robinson until he proves it. I mean, I, I you could. You could go with Robinson, but I'd rather pay a little bit less and take Mooney at 4600 I like the price on AB at 63 and 74 Again, uh, I know... That's a little bit pricey for him, but I do. He's the best wide receiver on this team. So, uh, which is surprising because Godwin and Evans are both very good, but AB is a Hall of Famer. So I would take him, not really messing with a banged up Gronk or Cole Komet or anybody else. So, uh, not a ton to play in a high scoring game because I just don't want to go with either running back. So it's uh, Fields. If you want to play Brady, too, I mean, you can play Brady whenever you want. I didn't mean to skip right over him. I just love this price on Justin Fields at 53. Yeah, I'm, I'm a big fan of the, the Tampa Bay stack here. Give me some Brady, match him up with some AB. The fun part is, do I pay for Godwin or do I pay for Evans? I think I take the discount on Godwin, but those two are the kind of the, the, the toss-up where AB, I just, I'm pretty confident he's going to get his 
like 90% of the time he's going to get his. And uh, I think so, Fournette's going to get touches, but he's going to be running in the teeth of that Bears front. Yeah, it's going to be a little tricky there. I'm with you. Like Gio Bernard could be the sneaky one if you really want to get weird, but I don't think I want to. Uh, so Tampa Bay, Antonio Brown with um, with with Brady, and then probably Godwin to get a little bit of savings. But I like that one quite a bit. Bring it back with some Darnell Mooney for nice and cheap there because that is the guy for Mr. Fields all over that one as well. Cincinnati at Baltimore. I think this game actually has some nice potential here. Over under 47 in this game. A little AFC North battle. Bogman, what stands out to you in this one? I mean, there's a ton to buy here. Either quarterback you want. Uh, I think I'd prefer Burrow just because he's cheaper. 62 and 72, 7,400, 8,400 for Lamar. Um, uh, Joe Mixon is in play. I don't want to mess with any of the running game in Baltimore. So Joe Mixon's in play here. Uh, Marquise Brown at 58 and 73 is a good price. Rashad Bateman is cheap at 34 and 53 as well. I like him. Although I do, I'm not like, I'm not running to the wire to pick him up in uh, like your year long leagues because I don't know how much Baltimore is going to pass as a whole. But this price and going up against a good offensive team in Cincinnati makes him a play for DFS. Uh, I like T. Higgins at 49 and 61 in this game because I expect Marlon Humphrey to be under Mark Chase. So uh, Anthony Averett, who has given up the most yards. Uh, two receivers in the NFL this year is going to be on T Higgins. So I like that mismatch in his favor. Uh, our boy, Mark Andrews paid off bub last week, and I think it can absolutely happen again. So I'm in on him as well. So there's tons to buy in this game. Yeah. I love this game. Like if you want to pay for Lamar, zero problem with that at all. I think he's one of your better catch game options, uh, in, in this slate for sure. Uh, I like Burroughs price too. Like we, we said it on the betting show. We've been saying for a few weeks, He's getting healthier. He's getting more confidence. He's looking a lot like the Burrow we loved in the past, and he's still very cheap this week. So both quarterbacks in play. I think, obviously, the, the safer floor is with Lamar, but potentially the ceiling could be with Burrow, all things considered. But I, it, it, at the same time, with the running game the way Baltimore is, it seems like no matter what touchdown is scored, somehow Lamar's going to be there. That's what it feels like. Yeah. Could have said that last week, though, when there's three rushing touchdowns from three scrubby quarter, running backs. So <laughs> we'll see. So like Burrow's discount is pretty nice. And then, you know, I don't mind Chase. You mentioned the matchup is troublesome. I still think he could take the, he's got that GPP, take the top off the, the defense moment, but I love Higgins. Higgins at 49 on DK, 61 on Fandle is way too cheap. Way it's almost cheap an auto game. buy. Yeah. Yeah. Like you got to play him. That's, that's great. Love Mark Andrews. He's pricey, but he's a great payup spot. Um, I keep go, I'll keep going back to Marquise Brown in tournaments just for the, the ceiling he gets, and he keeps getting targeted. Um, and then Rashad Bateman is a good value, 34 on DK, 53 on Fandle. So it's a great game to mix and match to get some get some pieces of. And if you want to stack it, make it a secondary stack. You can do a lot of things. But Higgins' price is way too cheap. Mark Andrews is a beast. Those are like my main two pieces in the passing game I want to have. And then mix around that would be my, my two cents. We have Detroit at the Rams. This is going to be a bludgeoning in L.A. <laughs> um, over under is 50 and a half in this one. And the Rams are 15 and a half point home favorites. So Boggs, what do you got here? I mean, if you're going to pay up for a quarterback this week, just make it Matt Stafford, 71 and 81. Uh, he wants to beat the do the doors off of his old team. So 71 and 81, uh, I know he's expensive, but I'm in on it. I also be in on Daryl Henderson at 66 and 8,000 because I think in the second half, you're going to see a lot of him because the, the Lions, the Rams should be up on the Lions by a decent amount. Um the wide receiver is a little trickier, uh, but it, anytime you want to pay up for cup, I get it. Uh, Robert Woods, I think, is a decent option at 64 and 68, although I think I would rather go with, you know, uh, Chase or Mike Evans or Godwin, who are about the same price. If I'm going to, you know, pay for a wide receiver, there's not much to like on the Lions side. I guess if you wanted to pay for TJ Hawkinson, they should be losing and they got him more involved last week. So he's a, a big option here, but just not, I don't want anything. The Rams defense also could be in play, but they're crazy expensive. So I think I'd rather go with Carolina, but uh, yeah, there's just stack Rams. Yeah. We're on the same page here. I think Stafford is a phenomenal play uh, pay up for cup. He's going to keep getting his, I like Daryl Henderson a lot, but it's tough to go with the, if you're going passing game with the running game. But we saw it last week. It worked just fine. Uh, I think he's a very, very good option as well. 66 on DK, 8,000 on Fandle. But give me Stafford. Give me Cup. 
I don't even mind Woods 64 and 60. I know it's troublesome. It's not consistent, but he, uh, in a game with this kind of volume, I think he'll still get his too. So I like that kind of setup. I don't mind the St. Brown call or the Hawkinson call. St. Brown super cheap if you want to go there. At the same time, I still don't mind DeAndre Swift because they passed to him so much. And if they're playing yeah. from behind, tons of dump offs because um, they're going to be in Goff's face a lot. So Swift could legit see like 12 to 15 targets. Like I wouldn't be shocked at all. Just dump off central here. It could feel like you're playing Antonio Gibson, but JD McKissick gets all the love. This is what it could be. So DeAndre Swift could be a very nice play at 6K and 71 if you want to bring it back. But I'm with you. The Rams passing game is going to go bonkers. So Matt Stafford can go, uh-huh, uh-huh, you're <laughs> cool, uh-huh. That's how it's going to be. <laughs> so keep that in mind when you're playing that one. All right, let's head to the desert. Arizona Cardinals are 6-0 and on the season. Now they host the Houston Texans as they'll move to 7-0 and on the season. Over under 47 and a half, Bogman. Uh, my favorite play in this game is James Conner at 56 yep. and 65 Love it. because Love it. Th- they are gigantic 17 and a half point home favorites against Houston. And they should be up big at the end of the first and see a lot of James Conner running down the Texans throat here. So uh, 56 and 65 is my favorite play. Anytime you want to play Kyler, that's fine. Like I said, though, if I'm paying up for a QB, it's going to be Stafford this week. Uh, just that's my opinion. Uh, Hopkins, 77, 8,000. You can play him. I would go with Kirk as my second option. I know a lot of people like Rondell Moore is the cheaper guy. I get it, but Kirk just sees way more snaps and way more looks. Probably going to need to do it in the second half. Kind of like Nico Collins as a punt play for wide receivers at 32 and 51. We saw him get the second most snaps behind Brandon Cooks. Uh, Cooks is also a good play here uh, at uh, 6,000 and 6,500 because he's just going to get peppered with targets. Not messing with Zach Hurts yet. I want to see what it looks like first. Uh, and the Cardinals defense, uh, 31 and 5,000 are in play because Houston is miserable. Yep, they are bad. Like the old defense running back combo, James Conner and the Cardinals defense is very much in play. And the fact the Cardinals defense is only 31 on DK and 5,000 on Vandal, that's cheap, actually. That's really cheap. So that stands out as quite the intriguing option, to say the least, in this matchup. So I think that's a great spot. You know, they're going to put up a ton of points, so I wouldn't be shocked if Kyler or Hopkins or somebody does it. Just for how long do they do it? Do they do it enough to be effective? I think it's a lot of James Conner. I'm with you on this one. Uh, I think it would be contrarian to make a um, a uh, a Murray with like Hopkins and Kirk or something or Green to make it to make a passing attack. Arizona would be contrarian because in theory, you still got to tell yourself if they cover the, the seventeen and a half or whatever, they got to score a boatload of points. So, yeah. like it's the old theory, like even in college, you know, the first half is going to be enough to do it. That that's your that's your dilemma. Right. But I think Ronders and the defense is the big one for sure. Tennessee, Kansas City, another game I love in a big, big way. I think a lot of people will because they have a total of 57, Bogman, 55-7. Where are you stacking this one? Um, Look, either side I think uh, you can do, but uh, the Chiefs side is what I like, obviously. Darrell Williams at 58-67 I think is a pretty decent play. Um, Anytime you want to play Derrick Henry I think is fine, specifically against this beat up Chiefs defense. I think uh, you can definitely roll with that. Tyreek Hill's expensive, but always in play. I kind of like Miko Hardman because yeah. he's cheap, 43 and 54. And he's getting peppered with targets over the last couple of weeks. We expect this to, to be, we expect Tennessee to score. So I, I think we could go uh, back and forth on this one. Uh, AJ Brown is a decent play. I'm not going with any other, not a banged up Julio or Chester Rogers or, uh, Reynolds or Westbrook uh, kind and none of, none of that. Um, I don't want to pay up for Kelsey, but I get it if you do and no defense here. So pretty much just a chief stack and maybe Derrick Henry. Yeah. The typical chief stack, you have Mahomes, Kelsey. Um, I like McCole Hardman as well. I've been using them a lot lately. Hill's fine, but if you want to save a little Hardman's a good pivot off of that. Uh, Kelsey's expensive though, especially you can play Mark Andrews for 6,000 instead of 76. That makes it tricky. But uh, Kelsey still got a ton of targets last week. He got a ton this week. I think it's a ton of offense. Like both teams get into the 30s in this game. So I have no problem with that. Same time, you know, you could save 2K going Mahomes to Tannehill, which I know is a big difference. But uh, I think Tannehill is very valid. You know, a couple early games rough. He's been playing good the last couple of weeks. I think they step up again. They play to their competition a lot. So Tannehill is very much in play with an A.J. Brown, like you said. 
um, and, and then bring back with some of the Chiefs pieces is definitely an option. And, and I agree, you can play Derrick Henry whenever the heck you want because he's a cheat code right now. Yeah, so he's been a Chico for three years now. Actually, I should say not right now for three years. Remember it's when he was going to get less carries and all that stuff because he had work, some workload last management year. type stuff. Yeah, yeah, nope. You walk in and try to say we're going to limit your workload to Terry Kenner. I'd love to see how that goes for you. Really <laughs> would. All right, let's go to a, a barn burner in the AFC East: the New York Jets at the New England Patriots. Over under forty two and a half. Bogman, this is pretty much a cross off for me. Yeah, look, if you're going to play anyone from this game, I think it's going to be Damian Harris at 57 and 68. Once again, kind of be a battering ram at the end of that game, get a ton of carries against a tired Jets defense because with all the three and outs and interceptions that you're going to get from Zach Wilson, most likely you're going to see the Jets defense on the field a bunch and you're going to see him get gashed in the fourth quarter. Jacoby Myers also in play at 53 and 5,700. Um, other than that, maybe if, you know, Corey Davis is cheap at 52 and 59 and Crowder is cheap at 49 and 58. I think they would be in play. I'm not going to pay up for Hunter Henry uh, in this game, though. So uh, uh, just a couple options here. Not a ton to like. Yeah, if this game beats me. I'm going to lose all my money. That's fine. I'm just gonna, <laughs> I'm not, I'm not going to try to navigate the minefield here and, and go to it. I'm just going to cross this one right off and head to the Sin City to Las Vegas. The Philadelphia Eagles head into Vegas. Over under 49, and I actually think this is a, a a sneaky, sneaky spot on the slate with all the other big totals and everything. I think this one gets overlooked, and yes, we could see a, the old you know Eagles-Niners game where nothing happened, or we could see a bonanza, and I'm going bonanza. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely uh, something that can happen. And look, you know, I'm not the biggest uh, Jalen Hurts guy, but this is a pretty decent price for him uh, sitting at – uh, what is he at of uh, 50 or 6,983? I mean, you know, all the, they're all expensive on FanDuel, So you just have to pay up for one, but for DraftKings, I don't mind Jalen hurts as a buy uh, at all. So I don't know that he's one of the best. He's one of the better values. Um, and he's going to run a ton, but uh, I, I do, I do like him here. I also like Henry Ruggs. I just, I'm going to take a swing on Henry Ruggs most weeks, 55 and 5,700. I just, I got to believe that with Gruden gone, that he's more than a decoy. He had a touchdown last week. I can't believe they only went back to him three times. I think that's something that you look at as a coach and you go, why did we only give him the, you know, throw the ball at him three other times after he made this enormous play for us? Get him a reverse, get him a screen, something. Get the ball in his damn hands. So short pass, I don't care what it is. Just get it for him. Um, if you want to play Renfro and Brian Edwards, I think their price always Trend towards them playing at 48, 4,100. Um, not going to pay up for Waller. I might pay for Goddard at 4,600 as long as, you know, gets off the COVID list and all that stuff. If you want Devontae Smith, uh, the price is good. I just, I have a hard time trusting him. So there is a decent amount to play in this game, Bub, but you said you like it. Who do you like here? Yeah, I like the Jalen Hurts price. Like, I don't mind Derek Carr because no one's going to roster Derek Carr this week. Like, no. Right, that's true. So I think that's a very, and we've seen him put up points. If it's a, if it's a shootout, he'll put up 25-plus points, I'd say, and no one's going to roster him. But I like Hurts for the floor he brings. He's a great cash game quarterback, uh, second-best scoring average on the season at quarterback this year, and he's one of the cheaper elite options, or like high-end options. Elite's the wrong word, but high-end options. On this slate, so I like Hertz at 69 on DK 83 on Fandle, both very solid, as you mentioned. And then you can bring it back, um, like with the, the passing game targets. I love the rugs call, still very affordable. Renfro, still very affordable. So those two are very nice. Um, I like the idea of going to Goddard if he's cleared. I think it's a great price point at 46 on DK 59 on Fandle. Waller's target share has diminished tremendously. Again, I can pay 700 less and get Mark Andrews. It's yeah. just so hard to pay for. Like, I'll pay for Kelsey because we know what Kelsey's ceiling is. And sure, Waller's done that once this year, but not consistently. Consistently, Kelsey and Andrews pretty much weekly do it. Andrews is keeping up, if not beating Kelsey right now. So it makes that part challenging. Back to this game. Um, if you are full stacking it and you're saying, screw it, I'm going for the gusto, Devontae Smith is in play. I'm with you. Yeah. But it's tough to trust him if you just want, like, remember what we talked about, I think, last week or the week before. You get like your little stack and then another stack. This is like the one where you're like Jalen Hurts, Goddard, and Rugs, like a small stack. And then you bring it in with like another piece, like you go Andrews and somebody from that. Like you mix and match that way. That's kind of how I'd approach it. I, I'm not wanting to go all in on this game, 
but I do think it's going to be under the radar and the ownership's going to skew in your favor as it gets well overlooked. So one I kind of like in that respect. Final game on the slate here, the Green Bay Packers hosting the Washington football team over under a 49 in this own Bogman. Like with the high priced options at quarterback, I don't even think I'm going to think about playing Aaron Rodgers this week. And this could be a foolish move on my part. I mean, I would at least think about it. I'm not going to scratch him off the list at all. There's just, like I said, if I'm paying up for a QB this week, it's pissed off against his old team, Matthew Stafford. That's yeah. what I'm going to go with. I also like the cheapness of Justin Fields. So uh, there's a lot of quarterbacks to like. So I'm, but I'm not going to scratch Aaron Rodgers off uh, at all. Um, I, I do like Aaron Jones. Price is a little dicey, but uh, especially with AJ Dillon getting more involved, so I'm probably not going to have any shares. Gibson is too questionable. If Gibson is announced out, I like the cheap price of Jarrett Patterson at 4,500. I know he's a little guy, but he carried the load at Buffalo. So we've seen him have an enormous workload and put up gigantic points before. Yep. NFL is different than the Mac. I completely understand that. Uh, but I do think that he could be valuable if uh, Antonio Gibson is ruled out of this game. Pay up for Devontae Adams. Fine with that. These corners are getting dusted in Washington, so I could easily see him going off for a you know record-setting type of a day. Uh, Terry McLaurin is going to get better at 69 and 72, so I would pay up for that price. Ricky Seals-Jones in play again. I know he's a little banged up, but 3,754, I do like uh, RSJ again. So that's probably all I'm going to like in this game, though. Yeah, I'm with you. I love the Seals Jones price tag. If you're not paying up for the 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 um our our, our big dogs that we've talked about, I think 3,700 for Ricky Seals, 54 on, on Fandle is very very good. He's going to get a lot of targets. This Green Bay team plays good, but the defense has holes, especially in the secondary. So you can exploit it. Uh, T Mac, I love going back to him at 69 and 72 an off week. I think he can jump right back on that horse. Uh, Devontae Adams worth every penny, as you mentioned, because this is in the writings for a monstrous game. And then bringing it back with uh, a Rodgers if you want to, because I think he gets very low ownership this week. So something to think about there. The flip side, if you believe Green Bay just takes it to town on Washington, like some people might think, AJ Dillon at forty six and fifty four is intriguing with the workload. Okay, game. it just because he's cheap, and all it takes is he's getting the, the the touches even in the passing game. If he has like bust one like Henry does, and he can, that is huge. So it's just building the, the game theory in your head. If you think he has the potential to maybe get, instead of 11 touches, get 15 and get the end zone as a game changer stuff, but not a must, but just the value he brings could be interesting to say the least. All right. Recapping things real quick. Bogman, who are you stacking up this? Week? I can't believe that's it, but that's the, the 10, 10 whole games, 10, the whole 10 games. game stack. Uh, like you said, um, kind of like Atlanta against your Miami team here. So uh, please don't get mad at me, but I do no, like it's, them. It's fair. They suck to stack against them every week. Either side of Baltimore and Cincinnati. I like, I like a uh, Ram stack against Detroit. Uh, you could do a mini Cardinal stack. I don't like a ton there, but many Cardinals because they are lopsided against Houston. Um, any week you want to go to Kansas city is fine as well. And that's probably it as far as stacks go. Yeah, I like that Atlanta Miami game, the Atlanta side preferably, but I like them both. Like even Tua, he's affordable, and I wouldn't be shocked if he gets the job done. So don't mind that. Like a Tampa Bay stack, Brady just continues to do it. But Baltimore Cincinnati is a good game stack, like you mentioned. Um, either side there, the Burrow's a little cheaper, which is nice. Love the Stafford stack, as you mentioned. That's a phenomenal one. Um, KC Tennessee, I like the value on Tennessee to go with the big KC options. That's a very strong one as well. And it'll be popular though with the highest total. Las Vegas and Philadelphia feels like one that I should be on, but we'll see. And then Green Bay <laughs> could be another one of the like. If you don't like the idea of playing the Vegas Philly game for the ownership game, at least play some Green Bay because no one's going to play that one. So that that could be a way to if it makes you feel better to play Rodgers and Adams, they're much more expensive, so it makes it tricky. But they're going to smash too. So have fun with that. All right, before we get on out of here, Bogman touchdown calls of the week. Touchdown calls of the week. I got no jingle. I'm trying to figure it out. It's late. I'm <laughs> tired. This is a long day. Of you got a chant and... going? I mean, I'm all here for a Let's of jingle. Just you know? like the old open, open touchdowns, touchdown, touchdown. The way you get to play touchdown calls of the week, you have to follow Line Star on Twitter at Line Star app and at Line Star NFL. And Bogman, myself, and Ryan Humphreys will each give you a, a touchdown call. You retweet that tweet. Three lucky retweeters get paired with each one of us. And you'll get to uh, have a chance to win some free swag if our guy finds the end zone. So, Bogman, week seven 
There's 20 whole teams playing. Who's your touchdown call of the week? I'm going to go with my favorite and one of my favorite NFL players, James Conner against the uh, Houston Texans. That's I think great. the Cardinals put the smack down here and James Conner gets in the end zone at least once. Yeah, that's that's a very good one. He should have quite the day, to say the least, quite the day. Um, for me, it's I was debating between a couple guys, but I am going to go to the um, Revenge Tour in L.A. The Rolling Stones play later that night for their tour. But the Revenge Tour takes place, and I'm going with Mr. Cooper Cup. Uh, he's going to just feast on these guys. That's why the only reason why it's hard to pay for Devontae Adams is because Cup's cheaper, and Cup should just go bonkers. <laughs> so, again, Rodgers and Adams will be much lower rostered. Just something to think about. But uh, I got Cooper Cup. You got James Conner. I love the Conner call. Love that one a lot. Um, and we'll see who Ryan Humphreys comes up with. Remember to retweet that tweet for a chance to win some free swag. But week seven in the books. Make sure you go back and check out the Picks and Bets podcast. I dropped on Thursday to get ready. You got this podcast to get you ready. You get the Line Star app on the Apple App Store and the Google Play Store. Get all the tools. Get the chat. Everything you need. There's been big winners week in and week out through Line Star. So check that out. Check me out on Twitter at BD Entry. Check Bogman out at Bogman Sports. And we'll be back with you guys next week. See y'all later. See ya. Good luck. Welcome to Pre Snap Podcast, presented by Line Star App. Here's your host, Casey Bubba and Scott. Thanks for listening to Pre Snap Podcast, presented by Line Star App. Please like, comment, subscribe, and rate for good karma in your fantasy football game.